All right. Well, it took a little uh, to get here, but we're here. <laughs> made it. All right. Um, this we is uh, Mike Palladini, correct? Yep. Nailed All right, it. A Penelope, a Penelope Bourbon. And uh, thanks for joining me, on, especially with the music communication here. I'm glad we were able to both get on. Heck yeah, man. No, I love it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. It. Um, so I guess the first question is, uh, Penelope Bourbon, it's not your typical kind of branding for a bourbon. So what were you ever concerned about like the the name and the design of your products like having a limit on your consumer base yeah i mean honestly no nah, not really i figured uh if anything it would only help us um you know and i think it, it really had you know it really was about the uh yeah the feminine branding no i mean i think it was just more of the story the narrative was uh was that it was named after my daughter who's actually up there crying right now um but, but <laughs> You know, for us, I actually think it would only help us. Um, I don't think we're necessarily marketing to to females or trying to kind of go one way or the other. I think it's just a little bit more of a gender inclusive kind of narrative um, in a very male branded dominated <laughs> segment. If you think about it, right? There's a lot of guns, yeah. Velcro, dip, all that stuff going on in whiskey. <laughs> and, you know, this is a little, you know, we got... Penelope and we got some peonies and we, you know, we just, we just take a different approach and it's, you know, it's less about branding. I think it's more about what's in the bottle. Um, but yeah, we do like simplicity for sure in our, in our designs. And even in some of our products, uh, we, we definitely take, uh, we kind of look at a more inclusive approach on how we go about even product development and stuff like that, which is, yeah, well, cool. I mean, you, you guys definitely stood out to me the first time I saw that I was like Penelope, I was like, who names a bourbon Penelope? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, you know, I read about the stories. I was like, okay, that makes sense. It, just, it, it caught me off guard seeing something out there. So you're definitely standing out. Like if I didn't have, like, if, the, if we didn't, I didn't have a daughter named Penelope, it would maybe be a little bit out of the left field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I just named it Penelope because I was a fan of that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, no. So what was the most difficult thing about starting your own brand? Oh my God. Even to this, even today, man, there's tons of stuff going. It's just, you know, I think, I think uh, there's a couple things. I think from starting it is one thing. I think uh, where we're at now, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're still bootstrapping this business. So we don't have like, you know, outside investors or anything like that. We, you know, we report to ourselves. Um, and there's that comes with pros and cons. The pro is that, you know, we kind of control our own destiny and, and we can kind of run the business the way we want to run it. Um, we don't have to do, you know, investor presentations every quarter. We can kind of do it the way we want to do it. And, uh, uh, but you know, on the flip side, you know, when you don't have, a, a, you know, extra capital, um, you know, it's, you, you operate very lean, right? So we're, we're a really yeah. small team, uh, you know, heck like I've done it. I mean, I do in-store tastings. Everyone does them. I mean, we, uh, you know, you kind of, everyone's a jack of all trades. You just got to be scrappy and you got to just, it's a lot of work. And I think being scrappy is the biggest thing. Um, cause you're just going to be doing everything. I mean, heck, I, I think I self-taught myself how to do, uh, like Adobe Photoshop, right. You know, we don't have, we don't have in-house designers and I'm like, shit, I gotta, you know, you get that something. That would probably be like, the hardest part for me is to learn how to uh, do all the graphic design and stuff like oh that. Oh my you gosh. Know. You don't understand. And in Adobe Photoshop is probably the world's most you know, and, and I can't sit through a YouTube video, like somebody that's explaining it over an hour video. I'm just trying to like figure it out. And <laughs> yeah. it's the most frustrating thing, but you know, things like that are kind of fun, um, in their own regard. And, uh, you know, but, 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 it, but to follow up on your question, really starting it, I'll be honest, man, I think, uh, I think it was the not, cause we never, I didn't never, I was never in this business, you know, and it's really regulated. Like there's a yeah. lot of like paperwork involved with liquor. And uh, that I feel was like the TTB and all that stuff can be uh, quite irritating. I never even heard of the TTB up to like three or four <laughs> years ago, right? You know, like I didn't even know who the I didn't know who the fuck they were. I was just like, this is nuts, man. And it's just a lot of paperwork, and we didn't have the money for like attorneys, so we're like trying to read all this this government jargon, and uh, that that was definitely to me the hardest thing. Um, yeah. Getting our permit in New Jersey where we started, and that was one of the earlier ones we needed to even get going. That was it, just exhausting, exhausting. Yeah. So right now, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sipping on the uh, the Penelope Berman 80 proofer right now. 
Well, you know, it's five o'clock. That's actually a good five o'clock <laughs> four. See, I'm I'm at eight o'clock here on the East Coast. So I'm already at barrel strength. <laughs> that's a good that's Going a good backwards. segue into the evening, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a lot of floral notes on there and some uh yeah. I say some vanilla and stuff too. That's that's really coming through for me. You know, that 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 really that dram is just like to us the, that thing was all about uh we just wanted the world's easiest sip. That was kind of the idea. Just make something that's like universally appealing, which is kind yeah. of hard in some respect because um, I didn't even look at it more so far. I actually, you know, b bourbon has got a minimum. It's got to be a minimum of, yep, you wrote it there, 80 proof right yeah. there. I I'll tell you, I mean, I actually had, originally I was thinking about going in and, and just scrapping bourbon and making it like a 40 proof and just making that thing like, just really, and it's, and you know, it's for, we're, we're looking at this as I'm, I'm, we're trying to get folks that don't drink bourbon, right? We're trying to get folks that sure. are in vodka, wine, and, you know, to, you know, that, it, you know, to really get their palates ready for, for what whiskey kind of does, um, uh, you know, the difference between whiskey and maybe wine and things like that. But for us, 80 proof was, uh, it was, it's light. I mean, it's meant to be a good universal sip. I think it's funny. You bring that 80 proof to a house party. And, you know, you're going to have people at the house party that drink bourbon and then some, you know, folks that don't. And what we co consistently hear is that that 80 proof is kind of that happy medium. So, like, if you're big into bourbon, you're like, yeah, it's a light, enjoyable sip. No, you know, no qualms. But if you're new to bourbon, you're like, OK, this is something I could get behind. Yeah, that's that was kind of the that was like the idea behind it. Um, and it still is to this day. It's actually our number one seller. I would say for 80 proof, it's pretty flavorful. I, I was just afraid something that low would be muted, but it's it's coming through pretty strong there. I got some nice cinnamon notes on there too. Yeah, and we had, I mean, we had to make some product decisions. So like what's interesting is that bottle, I, I've got, I probably could see it behind me somewhere. Like the one right Yeah, it's right, right, right over here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love it, man. And you could see it. And that was the original idea too with the big P. Yeah. It was like, if that's like a bar shelf, I walk into a bar, I'll be like, I don't know, just give me the, the one with the P on it. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate bottle. <laughs> yeah, because look, there, there's Barrel Craft Spirits, awesome company. Don't get me wrong. I can't read that from here. I could see the P from here. You gotcha. know, stand on your bar shelf. So it's just, yeah. you know, just just calling that, you know, just just being honest with that. Um, but we what we have is, uh, you know, yeah, I think, I mean, really for us, it was a couple product things. So um, we actually tested the chill filtration of it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when it got muted. So that's when I think we might be the only 80 proof that's non chill filtered probably on the market. I can't imagine there's, there's many others. And partly why is like at that lower proof, um, you will get a little flocking that will happen, but we said, you know what, it is what it is. It's not going to be like a crystal clear bottle. It'll be a little on the cloudier side, but the cloudier side is where all the flavor is. So we can't yeah, that kind of leads me to one of my next questions here is how does that help your products? Well, so it's interesting. Actually, you don't, uh, most, most companies, I mean, and it's that, you know, you could, I guess non-chill filtering is such a popular, I mean, no, not many companies are, except maybe the, some of the larger brands that have just, you know, big, big, you know, just have been around forever or selling millions of cases. But, you know, for us, uh, the non-chill filtering did on the 80 proof really burned off a lot of flavor, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the pro to non-chill filtering, it would have been that that thing would have looked perfect on the shelf, meaning crystal clear. You like, you know, you go to, you look at a bottle of bullet, right? If you yeah. look on the shelf, that bullet's going to be crystal clear. And I, I mean, that's, that's what the chill filtration will do to it. Um, uh, so yeah, so for us, that was a big thing. And, you know, on our higher proofs, as the proof gets higher, um, that flocking goes away with a higher ABV. Yeah. So you don't even have to, you know, that, that would be the only reason why you'd want to chill, fil uh, do some chill filtration on the lower proof was to make it clear. Whereas with the higher proofs, you're not going to run into that because the, the alcohol keeps it clear. Um, so you, you, you don't even have to, to worry about that. Gotcha. So you're, you have a four grain, all your products are four grain, correct? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I was thinking about that too the other day. Every single one of our products, we use uh, the exact same four grain mash or four it's our three bourbon mash bill blend that we've never deviated from that to this day so 
A lot of people have four grands out there, but they're making it a four grand off the bat. You're doing something different where you're blending it to become a four grand. So how does that process make yours stand out from a typical four grand? Yeah, I mean, you could you could distill it at four grains. Um, and we're actually thinking about doing that. So doing a custom mash bill and having just having our mash, our four grain mash bill as a new distillate. Um, but that's a big commitment. And you know, I don't know what we don't know what that will do to the flavor. I mean, that's really to us. That's totally unknown at the, right now. I mean, it's hard to tell. Um, so what 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 we do know is that when we blend the bourbons um, after they've been aged, um, you're getting unique flavors, right? And yeah. one of the things that I'm starting to even learn, and, and that's the other reason why we're still operating in the same, using the same kind of blend, the same mash bills, not necessarily the same blend percentages, but just the same mash bills is because every time we tinker and mess with them, we're just getting different flavors and different things. And we're like, I, you know, I, I you be honest with you, it's keeping us really focused on our craft and just hunkering in because heck, there's just so much to do just with these three mash bills, <laughs> let alone anything else. I mean, I, we got our hands full just with this. So, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Of, you, you talking about the blend there kind of leads me to my next question here. Um, you have batch numbers on your uh, blend. So are you like, as far as your blending process, are you blending for a specific type to be consistent or is it just batch to batch that's going to have a little bit different variances that you're shooting for? Yeah. So that's a great question. And I'll, I mean, and absolutely we could, I see the blending process too. We can explain that. Um, so we, uh, it took us a while. We were figuring out that identity of who we were um, even on their 80 proof. 80 proof, I think like on the first bottle, it says batch one, the second one, it doesn't say anything, you know? And so like third one, we we're like, yeah, throw it in there. Um, and then we decided to see it. Like we had no idea. It was like off and on. It was really just total, total chaos. But then we kind of decided that 80 proof is meant to be consistent. You know, you know what I mean? Like that one, we want to be uh, super consistent and doesn't change. Um, and that we're always blending to the flavor, a uh, consistent flavor profile. Now, with barrel strength, that's very different. No, so barrel strength, and we still didn't know in the beginning, it was like batch one, no batch, batch three. Like, and then finally, batch four, we had it on there and we said, okay, we gotta figure out what we're, like, what are we doing here? Like, what's, what are we gonna go with it? So when we did the bottle uh, redesign, um, you can kind of see it here, I've done some damage to it. That's the 80 have, proofer? What's that? That's the 80 proofer now? No, 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 this is our barrel strength. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we uh, we decided on batch five of our barrel strength. We did a we did a label redesign, and what we what we opted to do was um, put batch on the front, and, and we're actually just gonna let the barrels kind of dictate what the flavor profile will be. And so um, we changed up our process on on a lot of things. So um, with our batch five barrel strength, and it was internally we call it batch six of our eighty proof. You know, we we uh, selected the barrels differently. So normally we'd select a crop of barrels or a lot of barrels, and we you know use them for the eighty and, and our and for our four grain and for our barrel strength. Whereas with um, with going into this new process, we actually purchased barrels per for for a particular product. So we we'll start from the beginning. Like here are the four grain barrels. Here are the barrel strength barrels, and then from there we would actually literally you know sip through every single. Barrel. We pull samples, sip through every single barrel, and then um, we would actually probably kick out, say, twenty percent of the barrels for a particular product. Um, and it could, you know, that doesn't mean they're bad or they're they just could they, they have other uses. Maybe it could, maybe yeah, maybe one needs some more time in the oak. Uh, maybe maybe one's better for private select. Maybe one was just like amazing as a single barrel. You know what I mean? That leads me to my next question is how do you choose between a barrel select oh, and yeah, something nice. that you want to blend in a barrel strength, you know? Dude, this is flow, man. You're, 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 like, <laughs> you're flowing it, man. That's awesome. Hey, I'm trying to be, I'm trying here. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was, that was impressive. Um, I like that too. Yeah. And by the way, StreamYard's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I just, uh, I started doing this when I started doing the live streams with uh, people from the whiskey industry because I was doing Zoom calls with my friends for a while and they got a time restriction. There's other things that go on with that. This makes it more easy for you to like get things flowing more, you know, fluently here. So, yeah, no, dude, I, I totally agree. We actually, I actually got a StreamYard account myself and 
I, dude, I'll be honest with you, I was blown away. I was like, this is great. You can do all this fun stuff with it. You know what's um, funny is uh, I watched a video tutorial to learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I did too. It actually helped a lot. No, 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 no. I remember because <laughs> they got like you could do overlays and this stuff, and there was a lot yeah. of moving parts with it, but it's pretty user friendly. I actually did watch a video on it too, so I can't, <laughs> I can't say too much about that. Mm. I'm actually tasting your uh, batch five barrel strength right now. Batch five. Um, so that was an interesting one. That was uh, that you get like this. If, if you're into old fashions, that's probably a great one for an old fashioned because you're getting that citrus orange zest. I'm kind of getting like a, a Manhattan taste to this. You get a little, yeah, you get a little like that sweet vermouth kind of going. Yeah. Um, that one's that one was very very uh, fruity and like fruity. Like I get, I just got a ton of orange and just fruit citrus flavor um uh, on batch five i don't i think it was probably the wheat and the corn really driving that one actually i actually remember that um and that's why batch six got a little bit different it wasn't we didn't have a we didn't really care which direction it went down but you know for us we didn't we knew no matter what it's not going to be the same as batch five no matter what if you're letting the barrels kind of tell you where it's going to go and for that particular one it was really interesting because uh, yeah. I mean, batch six was, is more spicy tobacco. Like it's, you got char. I mean, it's just a darker kind of richer, um, more rye forward profile, if that makes sense. And what age is, uh, this batch five? So batch five. So what we actually, so how we've done it, we've, um, we've all, our, we're young. We're all of our barrels are very young, um, because we're a young company and, as yeah. we get older, our, our, our stock will, our, our barrel stock will increase in age. So uh, batch five is most barrels, I'd say were about three and a half years old. So um, the youngest were 36 months. The oldest were about four years. So in that three to four year range with, I say the average being around like 40 months, more or less. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. got a great mouthfeel for as young as it is. It does not take, it does not sip like a much younger whiskey. So no, and it's funny because I'm pretty, pretty, pretty uh, like pessimistic when it comes to our like when we're first tasting these things. I'm like, but I and I do think that is from, I you know I don't even know I don't know why because I've had a lot of whiskeys and there's some good younger ones. I'm not saying it's, but it's you know you could sometimes pick up the 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 corn notes or you could sometimes pick up some of the youthfulness. Now I still you could still gonna get that a little bit, but I do think from blending. I think there's a couple of reasons why I think number one, because it is a four grain. There's just a little bit more going on from, uh, from a flavor profile. So, uh, and I think it's cause it's blended. I think the, the sheer notion that you're blending and there's four grains, I think that just helps build, build it out a little bit more. I, I, I still, I'm still trying to figure it out to this day. <laughs> I, don't, I actually sorry, don't even know why it, it does that, but I guess I'm it's starting to get that orange you're talking about. It's coming off like an orange oil. Like, you know, you like lit it on fire and you let it drip down into the glass. It's like that really strong oil essence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we would do in-store tastings uh, with that. And it was our little, I shouldn't say this, this is like a little, you know, it's not actually a sales trick. I'm sure everyone. I won't knows. tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would always have, when we would do in-store tastings with batch five, we would have folks try it. And then we would have them, we would literally put a drop, just like a droplet of water in. And you'll see that orange zest pop. And it was really cool. We'd always uh, we'd always have a little fun with that. that. And I don't even know, you know, I mean, some and that that was usually a big folks would do that and they would be like, all right, yeah, I got it. You know, when you're at a retail store, that was uh, it's kind of like a little magic trick. People, you know, is people would have fun with that. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, I really it just pops. It does, but I'm also getting some cherry now when I add that water in there. Okay, yeah. I don't even know if I, I don't even think I have any batch five. I don't. Probably sold it all, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's the thing. Like, we're, we're like terrible at inventory management. Um, we, you know, with batch six, we, we actually don't, we, I, I've, I got one bottle and it's almost gone. Literally. <laughs> and we're kind of at the point, like, I, I, we prefer not even, I mean, I, we'll each get one bottle. That's where we're at this point, at this point. And then if I needed to drink something, I usually will drink samples, <laughs> like gotcha. samples I have. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. That so, but batch five was, I, 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 I have really enjoyed it. I, I think folks seem to like it. 
And, uh, you know, going from two, so batch one and two was about two year old barrels to batch four was like two to three batch five, three to four batch six, three and a half to four and a half. Um, we're, we're getting there, you know, I think it's just takes time. And, um, for us, we, we were okay with that. We, you know, we'd be transparent and just be like, look, like we are who we are and there's no smoke and mirrors. I mean, it is what it is. And we're just going to try to blend and make the best possible bourbon with what we have, with what we can afford. And, you know, eventually this, hopefully if all things go well and we don't screw it up too bad, this will be a six year product. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that'll be, that'll be a good age there. So yeah, we'll see. you, you have a uh, unusual cask finish and it's the rosé cask finish. I've never even heard of anyone doing this before. Why did you guys decide to go with a rosé cask finish for yours? You know, honestly, I, I just thought it was cool, you know? So <laughs> I don't know. Part of it is like, you know, we've tinkered with like Sherry, like Oloroso and PX, you know, cognac wow. and stuff. Sorry to interrupt you, but the nose on this is ridiculous. I don't, I've never smelled anything like that. It's I wild. Really like that. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It actually ended up being really good. Like it was like turned out like, and we had no idea. We did test a lot of rosés. Most rosés weren't good because rosé, rosé, uh, pretty dry. Um, but my wife, my wife came up with the idea. She loves rosé, and she was like, "Do that." And you know, you'd be crazy not to think rosé is a pretty hot market right now. And that that is so good. <laughs> that's not bad. I really that's, like that one. Yeah, that's really that, good. That's, that surprising me. I. I I try it. I usually shy away from rosé because when I'm having wines, I'm more of like a red wine type of person. But that is really good. I don't know what it does there with the uh, whiskey, but it's really complimenting it. Thank you, man. No, I appreciate it. Well, and it's the, I see. I wait up. Oh, I got two bottles of it right there. <laughs> I had to buy those bottles though. We that's another example. Of pour it. We had we had we poor inventory management on our side. We sold through it and uh, went pretty quick. And uh, we had to buy three cases back from our distributor because we need, we wanted to give out like even the the f small samples too. We couldn't even do that. Yeah. And then uh, I was I didn't have any bottles. I was like I need to get one. So then I had to. It's all right. We, you know, it's nice to support our customers too. <laughs> nice. Hey, right, what's up, man? Good to see you, buddy. I was just down in uh, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, batch five is good. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. No, I I appreciate it. We I yeah. So that was a cool one. It's funny too because that's very floral. Um, maybe in in batch six is very like spicy rye. Probably should have done it the opposite, right? Batch six could have been good going into the winter, and batch five maybe for the summer. But it is what it is. Man, I tell you what, that uh, I think that's the non filtration that you're doing with your whiskey that's giving it a really nice mouthfeel because. On this rosé one, it's kind of a low proof. At, what is that, 94 proof? But it's coming through pretty strong. And that Grenache rosé, so those wine barrels, if I remember correctly, they aged Pinot Noir for five years in those barrels, dumped the Pinot, and then aged 100% uh, Grenache rosé for, I think, a year or a year and a half. And then... Penelope Bourbon somehow got these things, and there was only twelve of them, so we took all twelve. I was gonna say you don't really find a wine aged that long for you know in a barrel like that. So that's especially between the two wines that they chose to use. And you don't you don't age rosé rosé, and I've come to learn this. I actually don't know much about wine. Um, you're yeah, up in I don't either. <laughs> oh, you're up in Northern California, right? Yeah, it's like Central Coast. Like um, I don't I know. Do you know the Paso Robles area? Uh, Have you heard of there? It's about it's about maybe a couple hours or so uh, south of uh, like Sonoma. Paso Robles. Okay, so Santa Cruz ish. Yeah. yeah, I'd say maybe like two and a half hours from there, going north. Okay, so it's a little far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it's but like, like I've heard of Paso Robles. Central California, and they're known for their wines over there in Paso Robles, and they got a whole wine trail thing. It's Wait, is that like a smaller... like uh, is that by like what's the the there's a town by Santa Maria. Um, Oh my gosh, it was like the movie it's, Sideways. <laughs> you know, it's funny is I actually live in Santa Maria, so. <laughs> oh, do you really? Nice, yeah. nice. I, I went up there. What was it called? Maynard Ox Ox? No, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Are you trying to think of the winery or? No, it's the name of the town. It was like a, it was like almost like a, a Swedish village, the town. Oh, really Solvang. Cool. Solvang, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We went up there. My wife and I have been up there. We, we've taken many trips, but th there's that's great wine country up there, man. 
Yeah, there is. There's several spots along the Central Coast here in California that have some good wine spots. You got San Luis Obispo, Paso Robles, Solvang. There's some good areas around here. I know, man. I miss California. I loved it out there. I was out there for about five years. Lived out there right after college. Where were you living over here? What's that? Where were you living over in California? Oh, I was like living in the heart of it. I was like in West Hollywood working in entertainment. (laughs) Um, You know, I was like in the thick of it, right? And then when you, it was funny because you're living in LA and then you go to like, uh, you go up to, uh, you know, you go up north and like the wine country. I mean, and all, I think all of California is beautiful. It's just an awesome yeah. state. It's just awesome. But I love, I loved it down there, man. I love like Venice Beach and um, it's just awesome, man. You can't beat it. I just went to Venice Beach, uh, what was it, maybe a month or two ago. Uh, my wife had never been there, surprisingly. So I wanted to show her. I forgot how crazy it was. Dude, it's bananas. <laughs> it's a whole nother world. <laughs> oh my God, I miss Venice. Yeah, they, it was like, you'd see the, I mean, it made New York City, like people crazies in New York look normal. And, <laughs> you know, PA, it's just cool. People do have their own personality and just wild, man. Got Muscle yeah. Beach and then, but it's uh, it's real expensive now. I mean, when I was there, it was still get it, like expensive. But now I'm here and I talk to some of my friends out there and they're like, dude, Venice is like crazy, you know. Some of the All houses. Of California that- real estate right now is insane. Um, me and my wife are actually going through uh, selling and buying right now, and the price is just like we started looking back in October, and every month it's just been going up and up and up. From yeah. like two months ago, we had to increase our budget by like a hundred thousand dollars because we weren't being realistic anymore. It is. So, it's a seller's market, man. It but is. You're trying to buy. You're trying to then you're trying to buy, and the sellers were like, "Well, wait a second. It's it, you know, it's a tough situation. I know. I I it's. I know, man. I don't even know. I couldn't even think about selling a house right now. It's that's a lot of work, but good luck yeah, on that. It's stressful. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure that's never, uh, it's about, yeah, it's, but it's exciting though. Yeah. So, um, are you plant? you were, t- you spoke on it a little bit earlier and is it something that you're still thinking about or it's definitely going to happen? You were talking about possibly starting to make your own distillate. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a, that's a, it's funny. I, I, my answer always changes on this because uh, <laughs> we didn't, I mean, it just really depends on how further and further we get into it. I don't think we, I don't think I don't, well, I'll kind of give a kind of an interesting background on it. So, and this is how now I'm kind of learning this now that I've gotten to this point. So when you're a, say you're making vodka, say you're, say you're like, don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just say yeah. anything. It could be any spirit, yeah. whatever. It could even be wine, right? Um, you know, you start out, maybe you craft it, and you're making it yourself, right? Yeah. As you get bigger, you can, I mean, I'm talking big, like selling it in every all 50 states, selling it internationally. You no longer have the capacity to even do that anymore, to make it yourself per se. You're going to contract it out to an MGP or a large, con- you'll have multiple contract distillers just making it for you because you need support fulfilling that capacity. So I'm always like, eventually, if you keep p- having success and you keep getting bigger, you're going to end up going back to them anyway, right? Yeah. I, I mean, that's just inevitable unless you just continue to build out massive, massive factories, which I don't think many people do. Um, so that would that was my only thought was like, eventually, if you keep growing, you're just going to end up back at MGP. Right. So I'm like, well, we're already here. So we're not that big, but like, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe, but with that being said, you know, Danny, we, you know, look, we didn't know how to build a blending and bottling line. We never thought we'd even have one of those. Um, and we, and we built that. Um, so I'm not, it's not, it's, uh, you know, I guess I'd say, I don't know yet. Uh, I, I don't have a problem trying it. It's just a big investment. And I don't think we're, we're there yet to, to, you know, I think we're still honing in on our craft and our product and stuff like that right now. And, you know, for us, a big deal was ensuring that we have inventory of aged barrels uh, and and kind of going from there. So I'm sipping on the uh, private select right now that you sent me. This one, to, which one, that okay. is, which one did I send? I don't, it doesn't have any info on the barrel or anything like that or the proof. So I'm not sure which one. But I know. I want to say that. a lot of caramel hard. going through here. So that's a 95 proof. Oh, it is. That's a 95 proof. Yeah, we did most of the private selects we actually did at cast strength, um, but we didn't have any. So the only ones that we had were bottles of Tommy's. Uh, it's a, a bar and restaurant out here in New Jersey. 
Um, we only did seven private selects last fall. Um, that one was for a bar and restaurant. And, you know, we, it was funny. We were holding onto inventory for them, meaning like, you know, no worries. We'll, you know, we'll make it and you just take them as you need them. I know it's kind of a crazy time, so don't worry about it. But I was like, you know, for holding on to inventory, <laughs> like I'm going to be taking it, you know, another case, you know, so, but no, they're, they're really good people. And, uh, that was really enjoyable. It's just, it was to kind of showcase just, uh, you know, just kind of more uniqueness. Those, those barrels are about five years old and, uh, the rye was, you know, very, very good on that batch. And, uh, yeah, it's just had a different profile to it. It's really good. Um, I, all these are great. Actually. I, I was a little hesitant when I heard about the, when I saw the ages on these, I was like, ah, I don't know, between two <laughs> and five years, uh, I don't know, but none of these taste the age. I, you, whatever you're doing from blending, you, you're doing a great job. Oh, uh, thank you, man. No, I appreciate it. But wait till you see. So just yesterday, uh, we've been testing all these custom chars and toasts. So uh -huh. I just tasted it for the first day. This is, this was amazing. And I'm like really excited about this because this is like, makes it taste like it's eight years old. Um, but we were basically what we were doing is we're rebarreling uh, barrel strength. So we'll rebarrel it. So we'll create the blend. We'll tote it, get the get get a blend going, and then we'll rebarrel it in uh, you know different new oak barrels. All different ones have different custom chars and toasts, right? So we did. Uh, we just wanted to test four, right? You know, two of them had a one one char, one barrel medium toast, heavy toast, and then uh, two of them had two char medium and heavy. So it kind of had four different profiles there. After just five days, I pulled the sample. It was yesterday. I was like, whoa, like, and I'm talking, it was like, really, I came home. I mean, I'm like really jacked up about these. I'm really excited because after five days, you were getting more of the char influence. The toast hasn't even started to hit yet. And because yeah. the toast is actually getting deep into the wood. Um, which is where it's going to start extracting some of that real sweet vanilla. Um, and that takes a little bit longer than five days. That'll take a little while. And the char is more of just, you know, giving a nice little char, like think of like a steak or yeah. something like that, right? You just sear it on the grill, uh, but it's not really getting in there. And uh, I'm excited about this because in particular, the one that really excited me was when we tested the two char with the two to uh, the heavy toast, five days, it was like, lights out really good like, so this is the upcoming release that uh people gonna be expecting or no actually it's actually gonna be our our future single barrel program oh okay yeah oh, so you're gonna do something completely different for a single barrel program yeah because you know we're a blend right so private selects private so uh what what we're kind of making up our, our program as we go it's like an it's a la carte people come in they're like can i do this I'm like yeah we'll figure it out is toast it going to me? Yeah, toast it's going. We're going big on it. So a great example, and that's a great question. We're actually, I just put, ordered 16. I'm going to be ordering 16 to 30 of these per month to be running them. Wow. Yeah, and this is, this is why we built the blending and bottling line. So private select is our custom blends, right? But that program is very barrel dependent, you know? Mo See, I didn't even know that. I thought private select was single barrel. So you're doing something, another thing different than the main, because normally a private is going to be a single barrel. You're blending specifically for people. It, exactly. And I think that was Kyle that wrote that. I didn't see the name on it, but Kyle down in Georgia, we actually just, so there's a couple, we were, I was down in Georgia last week. We have, uh, we've got a GS bunch Whiskey of, Dad. yeah, we've got a bunch of, uh, we, we got a bunch of private selects. We got some really good ones going out to market uh, down there in the next month. So private selects are, it's our version of a single barrel, right? If that makes sense. Um, it, yeah, like we have, we'll have, we have a couple, you know, we just don't have a lot of single barrels is what it comes to. Right. So we got to yeah. do custom blends and it's fun. Like we'll let people blend it themselves. Like, I don't care, like come up with your own blend. Or if you want, like Danny came up he'll, for each market, he'll come up with some really cool, fun like funky ones. And they're all coming out really good. And these are our oldest barrels. So private select is always like, um, the weed is the only one that's four years. Everything else is like five years plus. Um, and so it's, it's our version of it. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then, so that's custom blends, private select. However, the toasted series to me, I think we saw more scalability because this is really four year juice across the board. It's not necessarily barrel dependent. So with private select and these blends, it's like, you got to get very 
you know, you're blending and there's no outs, nothing else going on with it. So it's just, it, I don't know, like I'll, we'll do more private selects, but it just depends on if we get the right barrels, right. For it. Um, so it's very yeah. barrel dependent. The toasted series we can scale and, um, we are really after, I, you know, I was telling everyone how excited I was for it, but I hadn't really tried it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I tried and I was like, all right. And that's why I'm in, I just called up space side. I was like, Start bringing them in, baby. We're going. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to trying those. I'll get you some samples of it, dude. I'll seriously, I'll send yeah, you. That'd some be samples. awesome. It's you're, you've, already, you've already won me over. If it, if anything can do that big of an improvement on five days, I gotta taste this. And by the way, and I told Danny, I'm like, I'm like, five days. I'm like, this is good. I mean, the one chars were really this one chars tasted like Skittles. Are you gonna pull that five day already and bottle it? Or no, 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 no. Okay. So uh, a great here's a great example. So the, the the samples we pulled were five day samples. We had a barrel. We had a uh, um, Lehigh Valley Bourbon Club from Pennsylvania come out uh, yesterday. There was like ten folks, and I was there. I actually just got my second vaccine shot. I was a little. I was actually like pretty beat up yesterday, but I was powering through drinking barrels. Yeah, you were telling me that. I hope you're feeling much better. Oh. I, I think you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today I woke up great today, but yesterday was brutal. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had the uh, Pfizer shot. It was like, it knocked me out. But well, I just a couple sips of barrel strength and some, some toasted <laughs> barrel samples. And I was like, and then I drive home and then I passed out. But uh, yeah, man, we uh, what we ended up doing was we pulled it. So even, so we, the samples Danny pulled was from five days. But when I got there yesterday, it was actually now they were on day seven. So even two days, you've seen these big impacts. And, and we're convinced that the one chars could take up to maybe three or four weeks. Um, because you're going to get that toast. It's, it's a little bit more sweeter. Give that, give that a month. I bet. Right. The one chars, mm -hmm. the two chars are going to come quick. Those are going to be probably about two weeks. I'd suspect. Um, and then we did order up, I ordered up a couple five char heavy toasts, like some really, you know, some really dark ones and, uh, you know, we'll keep testing them. We'll see how it goes. Who are, who are you using, uh, for, uh, Cooperage? Uh, space side for all of it. Space side. Yep. Mm -hmm. We work with them. That's, you know, that's, we work with them on uh, sourcing all of our cast finishes. So we work with their, you know, their, 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 they help broker different barrels from, from different vineyards. So we work with them there and we, we just have a really close relationship with uh, their team and Rob. He's just a great partner and friend. I mean, he's the guys, the guy's an encyclopedia of information and uh, he's been really just a mentor to us. Cause we don't like, we're just a couple guys from Jersey, man. I don't know. I don't know shit. I didn't know shit about this. And then I just talked to Rob for a couple hours and he's like, look, here's the, you know, kind of walks you through it very, uh, very, very helpfully, I guess is a good way to put it. Gotcha. So you and you work with your wife and um, you guys are, are small and up and coming business. Obviously you have to come and see, come and see your wife every day, even the family. How do you balance the work life with, your professional life with her? Uh, that's a good question. But that's why that's why tonight was a little finicky. I think I forgot to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's look, I think it's uh, it's a great question. I love it. It's that's that's uh, you know, she handles our you know social media. Um, I think it's 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 been uh I think that's the hardest, that's actually probably the hardest part of all of this is like I we started the business when she was four months pregnant. Now Penelope's two and a half, right? Um, so that's always a challenge because, you know, you get, there's just a, there's never not something to do. I mean, there's just so much work to do and there's just usually not enough time in a day or, um, there, you know, that's usually it, but, you know, having her involved and like, she, she, we're all playing helpful roles. Danny's a, my close friend from best friend from growing up from home. So we all work well, his wife, you know, we're all kind of, it's like a family business, right? That's how we view it as, yeah. and it's, uh, look, and we're all passionate about it. I think, you know, I think that helps drive it. We enjoy what we're doing and we're having fun doing it. Um, and you know, I think that's, that's kind of it. Yeah. So when you're and she's the drinking... boss, by the way, too, she's the boss. <laughs> and that's all it always is. I don't know how it happens, but. You yeah. Know, one day I get married. The next day I look and I'm like, "Whoa! When did I lose control of everything here?" <laughs> right, that's it. That, yeah, it's better that way. See, she's CEO of everything. So, oh yeah, no, man, that's uh, 
it's a good question though. It's always, it's always a balancing act. Um, when you're drinking your products, you have several of them to choose from. What do you reach for the most? Oh man, it's, that's a good question. Uh, well, tonight I was actually trying a new private select. We actually just bottled this. It's like when we have a new label design for it too. We haven't even. I, really I really like those labels. Those are looking good. Those will definitely stand out on the shelf with that black and gold there. No one's actually seen this yet so far. Let me show you the other old private select. All right. You can kind of see it. Now there's not a massive change. And now, by the way, but you see how the P is bigger? Yes. So see, this, the is the, this is the new one. Gotcha. Yeah, you know what? I think shrinking, I, that, I think shrinking the gold and making the black in between made it help stand out more. Yeah, a little, little different, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they I think look it looks... Uh, well, and the other thing is, too, we wanted the size of the P to align with all of our other bottles. So it was always awkward with this private side. I was like, why is that P so small? So if someone had the four on the shelf, it just looked like really weird. So that was part of the reason, but... um. Yeah, so I we just bottled this. This is a uh, one that we're you know we're getting out. And uh, I, I normally what I do drink, uh, I, I generally I'll drink our eighty proof a lot. Um, I don't get I mean I don't get hung like I never feel like crap the next day. Yeah, um, especially if you're working and you got to get stuff done and you but you want to sip on something. You don't want to yeah. be necessarily drinking barrel strength because you you may not get as much done that way. <laughs> yeah, I get nothing done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I mean, on the weekends, I'll I'll have barrel strength, and um, I usually. But you know, it's funny. We actually now at this point, we I don't. I really don't drink a lot of our bottles at all. Really, I mean, like the batch six, I only grabbed one, um, and that, you know, because uh, we do have a lot. So what's of your favorite brand? What's your favorite brand then? If you're not drinking your own? Oh, that's yeah. So like right now, like uh, I had. Uh, I just finished Ezra Brooks seven years. I really like Lux Row. I mean, they're always making the uh, and I'm barrel not strength just, one. What's that? The barrel strength, Ezra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I think the seven year is a barrel strength. I can't remember. Well, there's a there's an there's an old Ezra barrel strength seven year, and then they got the seven year one hundred one proof. I think this one was the one hundred one proof. Okay, I haven't tried that one yet. I think they uh, discontinued it actually. So did they really? Uh, yeah. They had a good couple good. I, you know, I just they've always made good stuff, Lux Row. Um, I'm not just saying that because MGP bought them. I do. I did. I think I actually did. Like, I, I still do. I mean, I like that. Um, it depends. Like if I go to visit like a customer um, and he's got something new or like, like a great example is I finally saw old tub and the retailer, the retailer had it out for like, it was like 19 bucks. Some like it was 20. It was like nothing. It was like $20. I was like, I have, and I keep seeing everyone post it. I was like, Oh, I got to give it a try. I tried it. I was like for $20. Like that's a great yeah. model. Um, I don't know. Some I'm sure some places will jack the price up, you know, or if it's, you know, especially when people are trying to get it. But that's a great twenty dollar bottle, man. I was like, I could. That's that was good. Um, that was one of my favorite bottles last year. When I had that, I was like, I'd easily pay double for this. Now, it, what did you pay for? Do you remember? I want to say it was like twenty eight. Yeah, that's that's a good price point. But that man. was with that was with tax, so I think it was like twenty five or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's. That's a killer deal, man. Um, what other ones? I mean, I, I've, I've always loved Eagle Rare. That was always that was an that was like the OG. That was like an original one for me. Yeah, um, yeah I always loved Eagle Rare and Buffalo Trace and just some of the kind of That's, more iconic. That was like things. me, like uh, cutting my teeth in the bourbon world. That was really where I started. Was like Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare and Bullet. Mm -hmm. Like the baseline ones is what really got me into it. No, a hundred percent. That's actually, and I, man, I, I actually had a bottle of Buffalo Trace and I went back to it maybe a month ago or something like that. It's just damn good, man. It's just uh, good. One of my, one of my favorite moments with Buffalo Trace is uh, me and my wife, uh, I want to say maybe about two years ago now, we went to Greece and oh, nice. they're, they're, they don't really know much about bourbons or rice. So everything over there was like scotch and Japanese and Irish. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I can drink them sometimes, but I got to be in the mood. But I was like, I don't have much to choose from here. They got like, you know, Four Roses, Yellow Label, Jack, Jim Beam, Bullet. That was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have much to choose from. So I'm like choking this stuff down. <laughs> Anyways, 
we finally got back in from the vacation and we had we stayed the night in San Francisco so I didn't have to drive back home, right? And we go to this nice restaurant and I'm looking at the menu and I was like, eh, I'll just get a Buffalo Trace because it's a single barrel pick at this restaurant, you know? Yeah. And I, I taste it and like the first sip, like, oh my God, I forgot how good Buffalo Trace is drinking all that crap over there in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's their bottom of the line thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. I mean, now it's like... The those bottles are pop. I mean, hard to get in some spots. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I'll be honest, a big, a big thing I'm looking at is international for sure. Um, well, we, we just launched in Canada, which we're real excited about. And we did a pretty big launch too in Alberta. Um, but, uh, you know, these markets and that's, that's what kind of gives me, uh, get, get is what I'm really honed in on right now is, um, this international markets. Um, because the, the, uh, the competition is much smaller. Um, we're also based here in Jersey, right on the port. So my our our facility is like five minutes from the port of Newark. Um, so it's uh, and you know obviously it's if if it's going to Asia, we're on the wrong side of that port. But you know what I mean. But for for from a European perspective, but the the markets in Europe are skyrocketing for bourbon. Um, but you know, the problem is there's big tariffs and. You know, that four grain of Penelope, I mean, that could be upwards of like 65 pounds in London. So yeah, did, did that whole tariff thing get worked out yet? Or are you guys still having to deal with that? No, well, it's not even like it, it, it actually wouldn't even impact us. Like no matter what we could, it just at the end of the day, it's sad, but it all fall. It would always just fall on the consumer. No gotcha. one, no one would take it. So like I, we would, we just FOB what we call, you know, freight on, you know, on board, we would FOB our product right. here in Jersey. And then from there, what, what happens is it just gets tariffs and duties and, you know, freight and all this stuff gets tacked on. And then there's a landed cost. And I mean that whatever, you know, that all those fees are just kind of getting passed down the channel. Um, yeah. you know, sadly, unfortunately. So we haven't done anything really in Europe. Uh, I didn't want to put the product out for that high. I didn't. It just how many, like how many I, states are you in right now? Like in, in the United States right now? Yeah. Um, and and by the way, our launch strategy is based on distributors reaching out to us. It's like there's no like uh, if we if a distributor reaches out and we get along with them, we'll launch in that market with them. You know, I was just trying to think if I can if I've even seen your product here in my area, and I don't think I have. No, we've actually, the only thing, California is different. We do have an online distributor that we work with. Um, California, we we clear a lot of our online orders in California. Uh, but we had uh, our distribution. I, are you selling through a seal box right now? We are, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, he, he's helping a lot of those craft uh, businesses get oh, up Blake, and going. He's so. the best. Yeah. He's got he's got a great business. Uh, he's and he's a good dude. He's just an awesome guy. And if it wasn't for his site, I wouldn't have heard of a lot of these uh, craft brands. <laughs> yeah, no, me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, neither would I. I mean, I. It's been an amazing chat. He's got a great business. I mean, he gets good barrel picks. He's uh, he and he's got pr great pricing. Um, I mean, he's he's doing it upright, man. I from at least from yeah. from a supplier side, I think what everything he's doing is just a great job and. There's there's some other great ones too, and uh, you know the problem I think with a lot of the online shipping is you're in California, so I think you're one of those states where you can get product and you can buy it online and it will come to you. But there's there's not you know there's still twenty twenty five states that still run into some issues from from a shipping perspective. Well, it's not completely good uh, worked out here in California. It's odd oh, because really? there's certain there's certain sites I can order like I can order from Sealbox, I can order from some other local places here, but. Like if I go on, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's with Total Wine, but I can order from Bevmo, but oh, nice. I can't order from I can't order from Total Wine, even if the store I'm ordering from is in California. So <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's all these all that's these funny. shipping laws are just you know out of control, and they're in the archaic ages. That was something that was just you know decided like pre pre prohibition, and they just they never changed anything. No, I totally agree. And that was the, um, yeah, no, I, I actually completely agree. Uh, and then, you know, you also, it's expensive. You're adding an extra 12 to $15 per box. If you're buying one, just probably one bottle. Right? Yeah. You, better, you definitely want to order in bulk. If you're going to be doing that. Cause it's like, do you really want to pay that extra 15 to 20 bucks for a bottle? You know? No. Cause it adds up. I mean, look, you get a couple bottles and it's a, you know, it's, it's expensive for sure. So, 
but it is it is an avenue to at least try products. So there, there there's a positive there for sure. Um, and there there'll be more. I mean, there's a lot popping up. But yeah, we're we're right now we're in uh, 16 states, predominantly on the East Coast. Um, we California we are distributed in, but not it's online only. So we don't we're not really in many uh, you know retail locations. I don't think we're maybe like a handful, five or six or something. But it's all online um, for for gotcha. California. Um, and what was the uh, far Florida's like that as well too? Yeah. Okay. So you guys have several uh, bourbons that you have in your product line. Have you guys thought about, especially since you're with MGP, sourcing from them and they're known for it? Have you guys thought about? Are you in the process of doing a rye? Oh yeah, I know. Everyone asks us that. Maybe a rye. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm like real, like you know, I'll be honest. With you, I'm real into this toasted stuff right now. <laughs> so maybe a toasted it, rye. Maybe a toasted I, you know, rye. You know, I, don't, I don't think anyone's doing that very often. <laughs> no, there's not many. I think uh maybe Nulu might be one of the few ones doing a lot of yeah, the rye. Uh, who was rye. It? Parker's Parker's Parker and Heritage. Heavy char. Yeah. Oh, they are. Well, I they didn't have char. So I don't know. Uh, it's not technically toasted, but I mean at least you're at least double barreling a rye, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's double oak. Yeah, no, that's yeah. I haven't tried that one though. I'm sure it's probably pretty well, good. Yeah, good luck finding that one, especially for retail. <laughs> that one's like that one's like a big heavily allocated one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, man, I haven't thought about that. But uh, you know, part of the thing too is that there's a lot of just the um it's it's a big it's a big thing to do the raw like even to do any new product, it's like labels, it's like it's just there's a lot that goes into it. And um the one thing I wouldn't be opposed to doing would be doing something in the toasted series with a rye whiskey, because that's an easy, we can still use our toasted series label. And then it's, instead of it saying straight bourbon whiskey, it could be like a straight rye whiskey. Um, that would probably be the first four into it. And, uh, but we haven't, we haven't, that's funny. We haven't done, maybe, maybe we could look at doing a blend of straight rye, rye whiskeys. I don't know. Yeah. So your brand is named Penelope after your daughter, have you thought about the conversation you're going to have with her and explain to her that she's got a whiskey <laughs> brand <laughs> named after her? <laughs> no, I haven't even thought about it. I haven't, I haven't, maybe, maybe we'll crash and burn before and it'll be a, but she won't remember it. Then we'll never bring it up again. I don't know. I hope man. it doesn't break your heart if she tells you she doesn't like whiskey. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I, I, who knows, man? No, I mean, she's so young. I don't, I, but I, uh, yeah, it was it was funny because there's a there's a juice brand out of Florida called Natalie's, right? And we we do a lot of partnerships with them. They got great juices too, by the way. A little little plug for Natalie's. They're they're awesome juice. <laughs> and they're huge too. Now they're really big. So we, I know Natalie, and she worked in the and so uh, you know I was always I, we recently did a pro, uh, a promo with them for like this mint julep, uh, just these mint julep kits. And uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. Like now, you know, she's probably older, maybe in her late thirties, forties by now. And I was just thinking, you know, wow, it'd be kind of cool 30 years from now, you know, little P running, you know, running shop. But yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's far. It's, you know, it's a, I'm just trying to pay excise taxes right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a so, good question though. You mentioned your partner several times, Danny. Um, how do you guys split up the uh, the company and your duties like is, is someone doing specific jobs or are you helping each other do each other's jobs? No, it's divide and conquer for sure, a hundred percent. It's the hardest part about starting a business with a friend is that like, all right, what do you like? What are you doing? What am I doing? Right? Oh, yeah. that, oh I got this. You know, it's like you have some of those uh, obstacles in the beginning, uh, trying to figure out like work balance. Um, it's very clear. I think Danny's Danny's uh, an engineer, like he's super detail oriented. Um, he's good at blending and supply chain. Danny manages the the basically he built our blending and bottling line. Literally built it. Like he was buffing out floors, putting epoxy down. I mean, he's like real. I mean, he built the bottling line. It's like, dude, <laughs> it's it's and we did it very cost effective that way too. By the way. Uh, but he's, uh, you know, he's very uh, uh, operations, taxes, like back office and uh, all of our supply chain and product and blending and all that good stuff. The Where the overlap is, is on blend, like uh, flavor profile product. And that's where, you know, we both, we, we want, it's not, you don't want just one person's opinion. You want, you know, you kind of want yeah. a universal opinion. Um, so we all look at product and flavor and stuff like that. 
And then, you know, I kind of do all I handle like sales and marketing, really all the distributor stuff, all, all of that good stuff. And um, yeah, it's kind of how we divvy it out, to be honest with you. So like a great example, I was in Georgia last week with our distributor, like Danny didn't need to come down. Um, I'm going to go to Illinois next week. Like he doesn't need, he, he, there's a, you know, it's better to divide and conquer, I think, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so you said earlier when you were talking about your branding, how you're trying to uh, also brand towards people that are new to whiskey. So when mm -hmm. you guys are doing blends, do you get your wives' opinions as well on what they think of it since you're trying to go kind of away from the norm of what you would typically find for someone that would be trying to sell to a certain consumer? Uh, I think Danny does more so. His wife is – gotten into it a lot more mine isn't still she's more the on the vodka <laughs> train still <laughs> oh gosh yeah still vodka train although she's so disappointed I, re I remember the early 2000s <laughs> yeah 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 she did no but she she came she comes up with some good cocktails so our most popular drink is just our four grain 80 proof mm -hmm. it's called the nelly it's penelope bourbon with strawberry lemonade it's the easiest drink the world to make. It's our most popular one. It's it's at a lot of bars and restaurants. It's uh, especially during the summer. It's really good. So, are you guys selling uh, ready to drinks? No, no, no. That's just a mix. I we actually it's Natalie. We just take strawberry lemonade, put you know gotcha. Natalie strawberry lemonade with Penelope, and it's killer. We batch it up. I'll bring it to the beach and all that good stuff. There you go. Yeah, it's really it's actually very good. So, uh, but not really. I think uh, you know it's usually just Danny and I. Truthfully, that's what it usually comes down to. Uh, do we like it? So, I mean, if you guys are locked, locking horns, who gets the final say? You do no, rock, me. paper, scissors? Obviously, me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's never like that. Would you no, say that no. if he was here, though? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, he knows. I don't think it's that it's one way or the other. I think it's like, it's good. To, it's just good, like, because it's, you know, every, these are, especially where you're at, it's a big decision, you know, especially the size of these bottling runs. Like, like it's almost like like you want to make sure, and we do. Uh, we haven't even done that. We did. We it's usually been Danny and I, but we haven't really. We were talking about this for batch seven, I think, because we finally have time. We're gonna have about a month, which for us is like light years because it's like whoa, we got time. We'll probably try to get some outside opinions on batch seven, and not. I'm not talking a focus group. I'm talking like. Yeah. Ask a couple people, be like, yeah, what do you think of this? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, just not yeah, definitely not no focus group, but we may, we may do that. It's time dependent, but um, I don't know. There's there, these runs are getting bigger and they're, you know, we just don't, we, we can't afford to like have a bad run. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so we really need every run to be flawless. Are you guys trying to put out a certain number of batches each year? Or is it just, it's ready when it's ready, when you have the product? Uh, yeah, I, that's another thing we're still grow. I always say like, yeah, we're figuring it out. I mean, we definitely are. Um, it's normally, I thought, you know, I'd always say, uh, oh, maybe we'll do three releases of barrel strength per year. And then all of a sudden, dude, you're like launch in Texas and you're like, shit, they need a lot of product in Texas. Oh, did I say it's a big market uh, in Texas? I meant four. What's that? I said, I heard it's a big market in Texas. Like they oh, really huge. are into bourbons and whiskey. So. I mean, think about it too. You got Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, El Paso. It's a big state, and they like whiskey. Um, yes. And so we're launching in Texas July first, and I'm like, you know, you got to really and it's and by the way, it's very different. So um, California is kind of like Texas, where you got chains. So we don't have in New Jersey, yeah. Georgia, t t these none of these states that we operate in, maybe with the exception of Massachusetts, they're they're what they call independent states meaning you can't, there's no chains in any of these states. So you're never going to get these big, uh, like a BevMo or there's total wines in New Jersey, but there's only four of them. And they're actually technically, they're like independently owned. So it's very, it's just like a different setup. So you're never going to get these big, big corporate uh, buyers like from BevMo coming in and like buying pallets of product, right? So it's like very, you know, much more independent mom and, mom and pop stores, which is great. It's that's a that's a great thing. But with Texas, kind of like our first foray into that, and you're like, whoa, like there's some big, like everything's bigger in Texas. So it's uh, it's about planning for it. But yeah, no, kind of deviated from the question. But really, the idea is uh, we're kind of really trying to stick to now a quarterly release schedule. 
All right. So have, you have you personally had to go to every one of these states that you're in? No, no, to be honest with you. I mean, I we launched in most of these states during COVID. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we had so launched- it was all online and everything? Yeah, like I did, uh, man, heck yeah. Everything's been online. I mean, we, I mean, we, we were in uh, Metro New York in January of last year. But yeah, if, if, if I was doing this during and say no COVID was going on, yeah, you go to every state for a launch, do like a 15 minute presentation there. And maybe you, you know, stay the weekend and Monday, Tuesday, hit some accounts. So last week was the first time I went, I was actually was like outside of traveling to Kentucky for a bottling run. Uh, last week was my first time like in market um, visiting and it was awesome. It just felt good to be out there. And then Athens was, be I was in Athens, Georgia. I was a beautiful town, by the way, too. The university it was like awesome. Big whiskey market too. But uh, yeah, it just felt good to be out and like meeting people and also seeing some of our customers and getting to meet them for the first time. It was pretty cool. Did you, you know? get to do any sightseeing while you were in there in Georgia? What's that? Did you get to do any sightseeing in Georgia while you were there? No, no, man. It was bad. Uh, oh. We, uh, no, I just, it was a lot of driving, you know, rented a car on Monday. <laughs> I, I got there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, flew back Wednesday night, woke up Thursday, got my second shot of the vaccine, kind of was a little loopy. And then uh, Friday <laughs> had the uh, a group come and do a poll. And I was kind of all over the map that Friday from being a little, uh, from the travel maybe and from the thing and then Saturday this now here I am Saturday I got some barrel strength you know I'm getting at it man <laughs> and then Monday I got about I'm gonna bounce back to uh, Illinois so I'll see our that's and that's again I'm just because you know my wife and I she, where she's due in August so we're uh I'm trying oh, to have another work. kid yeah I know I'm that crazy <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait wait you know no. you're forced no. to name her after a brand too now right no, or, no, or no, he, no. whatever it may be <laughs> yeah, first child rule, dude. That's what I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> you can't have someone be the favorite. <laughs> no, I'm not necessarily the favorite. I'm just saying, like, you came second. What do you want me to do? <laughs> no, man, I know it's funny, but uh, yeah, no, it's nothing like that. And uh, yeah, man, we're uh, I'm excited, man. So we're trying to get out and travel as much. I'm gonna be going to Nebraska and visiting some of our customers there too. So. I should try to get to Wisconsin why. this summer, so I don't have to go there in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> you, when you said Nebraska, for some reason, what was it? Uh, yes, man, popped into my head. <laughs> What's that? that with... The uh, Jim Carrey movie? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> they yeah, just picked the next flight, and they randomly fly to Nebraska, and they're like, "All right, Nebraska." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Midwest, man, it's beautiful out there. It's farm country. It's actually, it's funny. Um, Drizzly, and I can see it too in our depletions, but Drizzly ranked Omaha, Nebraska as one of the fastest growing bourbon markets in the country. Hmm. I mean, it's insane. It's a, and it's actually a beautiful, it's a really cool city. Like I was there many years ago when I was actually living in LA, I had to go to a work trip there and uh, it was a, it's a cool town and uh, I'm excited to get out there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a couple trips and stuff like that. I've, and now that I got the vaccine, I'm all right. I feel like, I feel like I got like, yeah, I'll still wear my mask. They want me to. That's fine. Yeah. But I feel like Superman with this little whatever I got in me right now. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I like to travel and go places and vacation, but I hate flying. Just being in that cramped airplane, all uncomfortable, especially with COVID, having to wear the mask the whole time and people are like coughing without their mask because they're not following the rules. And I'm like, come on, man. Dude, I just put my headphones on and just <laughs> stare at the seat in front of me and don't – I am one of the most impatient people in the world. So for me to be on a plane, especially if I'm flying cross country, it's like agony for me. And my wife is trying to convince me to go overseas again. I was like, it's going to be a long time before I want to go back overseas. Because I remember that flight, like I was talking earlier about going to Greece, where it was like an 18-hour flight total because we had to stop in like Switzerland or something like that. And it's like, I don't ever want to experience that again. Yeah, no, that's terrible. That that's a long time. I mean, and you always yeah. get the guy that's like stretching his feet, walking up and down the aisle. You're like, come on, man. Yeah. Like we all want to stretch <laughs> out, but we're not. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? The guy that's like just meandering up and down the aisle. You're like, there is. There's a lot of uh, crazy individuals on planes. Um, one, we went to go visit uh, my in-laws uh, last year during COVID, and. Uh, this guy was literally wearing a gas mask, like with like filters coming out the sides and everything. 
I was like, it really caught me off guard. I didn't know how to react. I'm like, this is nuts. Who is this guy? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. See some, you see some crazies on those things, man. It's crazy. It's a lot of, a lot of interesting, good people watching. Um, but yeah, no, I, it, it's, and these are quick flights, like Newark to Atlanta is like an hour and a half, you know, um, you know, Illinois, that's like a two hour flight. So when I was living on the West coast, that's six hours, even that six hours to the East coast is a, that's a haul. It's yeah. a, it's a flight. that's about my max uh, uh, more than that. Then I'm, uh, I, I gotta get off the plane. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that is a far, I mean, it's, that's, that was a, and even when I take the red eye home, if I was coming back to see my family, I'd be like, get in at like six. You feel like just crap the rest of the day. Yeah. Well, Hey, I don't want to keep you up any longer. I don't know what else you have planned tonight, but I appreciate you with all the confusion coming on. No, man. It's awesome. Tonight. It's awesome. But uh, yeah. Hey, uh, anytime you want to do this again, I'm ready to do it. And especially all those new products you're talking about. I'm ready to just try true, those. Man. Love, dude, it's seriously, I'd love to. Like, this was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, sorry about that. And then we were emailing and we said seven 30 and then I've, I just thought eight o'clock. Then after I went outside, I was like raking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, sorry about that, man. And uh, yeah, don't worry about it, man. We we figured it out. We I'm really appreciate you. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having us on. I was glad to glad to talk to you as well. It was a lot of fun. And um, no, I appreciate everything. Thank you for the support and everything. Well, thank you, especially for providing all these. Man, they all taste great. Anyone out there watching this later on, go buy these products. I can vouch for every one of these, uh, especially the rose cask and the private select. Those are my two favorites. Thank you, man. That's awesome. All right. I'll see you well, again. Well, good talking yeah. to you.